Hello everyone from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Stewart, Minnesota. This is the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Keep your family faithful to you. Protect us from all evil, so that we may serve you by doing good. To the glory of your name, we ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, beginning at verse 4. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, 
and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Our second reading comes from the letter to the Hebrews, the fifth chapter beginning with verse 1. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you as he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The Gospel lesson appointed for this Sunday is from the Gospel according to Mark, the tenth chapter beginning at verse 35. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left, is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it's not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. How were the twelve disciples of Jesus so great? In what sense can we claim that they were great men? Suppose someone asked you to explain what was so great about the twelve disciples. What shall we say when we get asked that question? Weren't they just twelve random fellows? What must we say in response? 
you might not think of this answer right away, but today's lesson tells us that we should point to their service, to their sacrificial witness for the sake of the gospel. You know, the original word for witness was martyr. They were martyrs in the sense of being witnesses and martyrs in the sense of suffering for their faithfulness to Jesus. So rather than making them great in a way that this world recognizes, they became great in the way that Jesus speaks of. In a word, they were martyrs for the sake of Jesus Christ and for the sake of the gospel. Thus, they are great in Jesus' kingdom. Let me guess that most believers hear today's words from Jesus as law rather than gospel. Here are the words from Jesus that I'm thinking of. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Do you know what I mean? Do you think that sounds like law? Or do you catch God's love and God's promise in these words of Jesus? Do you catch how we can say that the twelve disciples were great in the way that Jesus talks about being great in today's lesson? It can sound like law telling everyone to be a servant because of how Jesus was responding to a request from James and John to be given high positions. Indeed, the highest positions of authority in Jesus' kingdom. Just like the other disciples, we might be thinking that it's good to knock James and John off their high horses. We surely think that it's unseemly to grasp for authority and high honor in Jesus' kingdom. But Come at it from the opposite direction. Can there actually be distinctions and honor in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus was saying that there are. Would you like to be a leader in the kingdom of heaven? Can a person be great in his kingdom? That's truly something to ponder, being a leader in Christ's kingdom. Can you recall some Bible verses about actually being a leader in the kingdom of heaven? There's actually a word of promise here for service in Christ's kingdom. Do you remember how Jesus promised a reward for even the slightest and least efforts on his kingdom's part? There are actually several verses to that effect, most famous one being about giving a cup of cold water that's gospel. That isn't about earning our way to heaven. That is about being rewarded in heaven for our service for Jesus. Of course, just making it to heaven should be absolutely the most important thing of all. Nothing can compare to the salvation that Jesus has won for us. It's entirely impossible for us to earn our way to heaven. Rather, Jesus does the heavy lifting, and we just receive the freedom from sin, from death, and from the devil that Jesus has won. But Jesus has an eternal kingdom to run, staffed by his followers. It's that staffing that Jesus was talking about, that leadership. So Jesus actually is focused on running his kingdom, and this involves sacrificial service from his disciples. Near this point in the story, in the gospel according to Matthew, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So Jesus clearly says that James and John, along with the other disciples, will sit on thrones. 
judging the 12 tribes of Israel. There's another passage in, in Revelation 20 that closely applies to the question of disciples ruling with Jesus over his kingdom. It goes like this. Then I saw thrones, and those seated on them were given authority to judge. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony to Jesus and for their word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So let's take the thought of ruling or reigning with Jesus in his kingdom seriously. Think of it more broadly as leadership in Jesus' kingdom. It's something that we tend to overlook as we focus on what Jesus said about service and being servants. This is also about leadership. Though we Christians are taught that Jesus is ruling his kingdom even now, non-Christians probably think that Jesus' greatness is all in the past. But we Christians should know better. In fact, we're doing our best to actually live in his present kingdom under his present rule now. And this is what Jesus is speaking about in talking of servant leadership here. It's for service in this life that we're promised rewards in eternity. Jesus is asking us to serve in his kingdom here and now. Would you be great the way Jesus Christ is great? Would you like to be famous and respected for the same reasons that Jesus of Nazareth is? That's the question that Jesus posed to his disciples, James and John. But now the question comes to us instead of to James and John as we read today's lesson. Jesus has established an amazing kingdom in this world, though it's not of this world, almost 2,000 years after his death and his resurrection. And even non-Christians regard him as one of the greatest men who ever lived. Jesus' name is famous and respected in this world for precisely the reasons he taught in today's lesson. His service, his leadership, his servant leadership. That respect is just a glimpse towards the kingdom Jesus truly does rule over, a kingdom we're taking our parts in. As for all the rest of the human race who don't see themselves as followers of Jesus, they don't believe in Jesus' resurrection from the dead and don't understand themselves as presently under Jesus' authority ruling from God's right hand. To non-Christians, Jesus was just one more human being who died long ago while we understand that he is in fact alive and now ruling over his kingdom. Despite the world's lack of understanding, his kingdom is as real as can be. So we're talking about something more real than simply a topic called servant leadership. Non-Christians may have no sense of Jesus's kingdom, what it is and how it now exists, but we Christians should have a feel for that kingdom, and we should aspire to leadership in that kingdom, which is not of this world, but if we look around this world in an effort to perceive his kingdom, we mustn't use this world's standards. That was the problem with the efforts of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, to get themselves appointed to high positions in Christ's kingdom. They were using the standards of this world in their request. Even so, the truth is that James and John do have great respect and honor in Jesus' kingdom, but that's because they then gave themselves sacrificially for others and for the honor and glory of Christ's kingdom. That's why Jesus told them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. So they are great and famous in Jesus' kingdom. They actually did drink the cup that Jesus drank and were baptized with the same baptism 
Jesus was baptized with. James was early on martyred for his leadership among the twelve. The story is told in Acts 12. It's more typical to criticize James and John for their worldly standards in their request for high stations in Jesus' kingdom. But let's notice also the glories of Jesus' kingdom and the real rule of his disciples over his kingdom even now. Even now, Jesus is reigning over his kingdom. But it's not just Jesus who is reigning. Jesus' disciples are reigning with him. This isn't just remembering the past that's long gone. Jesus' kingdom is a present reality. It's both eternal and present for us now. And we do honor James and John highly. So what's the answer to the question about the fame and authority of the 12 disciples? They really did sacrificially witness to Jesus Christ and the gospel. Their authority and fame actually are evident throughout the world, wherever Christ is ruling. They're great because they witnessed for Jesus. They're great martyrs. Their testimony lives powerfully among us. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As disciples of Christ Jesus called to love and serve all people, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and all of God's creation. Heavenly Father, we remember that Jesus truly is the Messiah. It is his kingdom 
in which we're participating. He truly is the greatest. Help us to follow his example and serve him and all who are in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for our service with you as individuals and as a congregation. Help us truly to walk as your faithful disciples. Help us to truly lead others to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, the world around us doesn't understand that even now you are ruling over the human race. You have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. May the world see your greatness and the service that you give. You have the words of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, help us not be influenced by the world, but to always walk with Jesus and to be aware of Jesus' rule and care. He's our good shepherd. Help us to look after all his sheep and lambs. Send the Holy Spirit to us to help us make these efforts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you give us the bread of life. We have entered your kingdom and become part of your service to this world. Help us to remember the part about serving and walking at your side until the end, when we shall see your fabulous kingdom in all its shining glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember Christians suffering persecution for their faith. Strengthen and encourage them. We ask for your help for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, how can we help those around us who are like sheep without a shepherd? What tasks do you give us to do in your service? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal and strengthen weak bodies, calm and correct confused minds. We pray for those we know with particular needs, including Deloitte Dreyer, Alma Jean Wagner, Sylvia Margraff, Ordell Klukas, Shirley Kirkhoff, Jeremy Myrick, Natalia Myrick, Kristen Doerr, Alton Lean. We remember the family of Scott Margraff as they sorrow at his death. Please be with Milt Spanton, Lon Strom, Kathy Stadema, Keith Renner, Steve Sangren, Sam Schumann, Nancy Stewart, Keith Richer, Darlene Karg, and Donna Feigum. Support them all with your great love and mercy, Lord, and be with others known to us whom we silently now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we present these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is risen from the dead and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.